Thank you for joining me again. Um, my name is Apple, and today we're going to be doing an interview slash, you know, informal session with my girl, Lindsay. Lindsay, go Hi. ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay. So, um, <laughs> so, by the way, guys, I met her out here, and, like, honestly, like, she's been such a vibe, so awesome. Since we met, we met in bartending school, so, you know, if y'all got a job, let us know. We're still looking, but... Um, she's doing a lot of big things. This is why I always talk about the importance of networking and talking to people. Um, so when we got to talking, she was telling me about some projects that she's been on, things that she's working on. So I was like, can we accept for her interview? And she was like, yeah, 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 let's do it. So I'm just, I just want to thank you for, you know, sitting with me today, sitting with us and getting into all of this good stuff. Absolutely, of course. And you've been such a vibe as well, Apple. Like, I'm so happy that we met. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so this and is a, uh, We're both Jersey girls. We what are. Us? We are. Well, she, I'm, she's like a world-renowned traveler. That's how I would put it. <laughs> but, yeah, we're definitely both from Jersey. Like, in the same area, too, which is so crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, so crazy. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you've been working on. Let's start there. Okay, so I'm a casting director. I just started my own casting agency, Dream Merchant Casting. I'm in the early stages of a TV series um, that I'm one of the creators of, and I'm also producing another TV series called Locked in the Cookup. So if you're a musician, a producer, tap into Locked in. <laughs> so what, what was that? Locked in the... Locked in the Cookup. So basically... Food done came, so y'all gonna have to rock with us with this food. Shout out to, this is actually my first time. It's your second time here, right? Mm -hmm. What is it called? Breakfast. Atlanta Breakfast Club. Atlanta Breakfast Club. So let, we're going to see what this food is like while we're having this conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so good. But, um, so basically, I'm a casting director. I just started my own casting agency, Dream Merchant Casting. I'm also currently working on two TV series. One, I'm the create. I'm one of the creators of. Um, I can't really go into too many details about it because we're still in the early stages of production, but we are currently casting. So if you're an actor, tap in. And also my other show that I'm working on, I'm one of the producers of it, and it's called Locked In The Cook Up, mm -hmm. and it's for music artists, like up and coming artists. So basically, what Locked In is, it's um, basically going to be three groups of people. There's going to be six artists three producers and two of the artists are going to be paired up with the producer at random and it's kind of like a competition and you're going to get like a content package and uh -huh. it's just going to be a really dope show so follow me on instagram at Lindsay boo and all the info is on my page yeah. and y'all heard what she said i would definitely tap in if i was y'all especially with the chicken and waffles too <laughs> 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 like this is this is him but, um, Told you it's good, girl. You did tell me, so we kind of gonna get in it. No, oh, excuse me, this was really hitting. Me. But and I got the waffles with the peach cobbler or something like that. So y'all know these waffles really hit. So what inspires you and motivates you to keep going? Because especially with the industry and, you know, you're also a mom. She's definitely a mom as well. Awesome as well. Her son is so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, you know, like, and I know you've been going through, uh, like, some stuff recently. So, mm -hmm. like, what just keeps you moving forward? Honestly, of course, my son, you know, number one. And then my goals. Like, I have mm -hmm. big goals and I'm going to reach them. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> That's my word. Period. Okay. Okay. So definitely your son. Mm -hmm. What age did you have your son? I had him at, I had him right before my 21st birthday. Wow. Okay. So yeah, okay. two months before my 21st. Do you so. feel like you were ready when you had him? Or Absolutely like not. <laughs> I didn't even babysit kids. Like I didn't know, you know why? of course growing up I used to babysit my younger siblings, but like right. at that age, you know, I'm just enjoying life. Right. I'm not used to babies right, or right, anything. Right, right. Like. I was scared, but he, he's been so awesome. He I was love that. such an easy kid, like, from right. birth. I love that. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you guys heard her. Definitely her child keeps her moving forward. <laughs> now, so these are just, like, some warm-up questions. I want us to get to know you a little bit, you okay. know. So, tell us what what caused you to get into, you know, the, um, like, arts, entertainment industry. Like, what started that for you? 
So since I was a kid, I've been a music lover. I've always wanted to be in the entertainment industry. Like it's always been my dream. But I've been always putting it off, like, oh, well, I got to focus on this first and this first. And then finally, I had moved back to Atlanta, and I'm like, you know what? It's just yeah. go time. I'm just going to go after my dreams. And I love that. Jobs and opportunities have just been falling on my lap. So, wow. Yeah. I love that. So <laughs> it happened when you moved back here. It was yeah. just like, let me just do it. Exactly. So two years after I moved back, I was... Um, Right before COVID in 2019, I started doing music videos. And the casting director <laughs> on Sleepy Rose's Woo set basically took me under his wing and asked me to help him start back up his casting agency. Shout out to Chicago Chris. Most of y'all in Atlanta know him. Chicago Chris is the OG in this game, okay? He casted for shake it fast welcome to atlanta he cast it for lil wayne whitney houston everybody you can think of he's the nice. goat so nice. yeah and nice. then you know um started doing casting and then producing and uh being one of the creators for the show just kind of fell on my lap too so. i love that okay so how did that go so you guys heard she's from jersey and then she was like when i came back to atlanta so give us a little bit on like where you visited or lived and which one was your favorite so far Okay, so <laughs> I was born in Jersey, and I was raised in Atlanta most of my life, but we moved back and forth from Atlanta to Jersey. After high school, I went to Alabama um, to go to college, Oakwood University. Then I moved back here. Then um, right before I had my son, I moved to Miami. Then I moved back here. <laughs> then I moved back to Miami. And now I'm back, so. Okay, now you're back. Are you back to stay, or you're just back for now? You just know, like, right now I'm right here. I'm back to stay for now because of the, you know, the film industry is booming out here. Yeah. Atlanta is Hollywood of the South right now, right, so. Right. I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, let's let's kind of get in it. You know, it's it's Valentine's Day week, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> or month, you know. I don't know. It's just a certain energy when it hits February. You see people acting all like, I don't know. Do you see, like, people yes. just act a certain type of way? Mm -hmm. And I'm like... Me personally, I feel like love is something that we should engage in and embrace 365. You know, I could give somebody a gift randomly out of nowhere, but mm -hmm. I feel like people put so much emphasis on Valentine's so Day. Much, yeah, pressure it's on like, it. It's like, alright, like we don't have nothing else going on. We're just going to pause everything and worry about that day. Mm -hmm. But give us some words. How do you feel about Valentine's Day in particular? So, I'm not pressed about it. I'm currently single laser focused on my goals but i mean if i was in a relationship of course i would want to go on a date or right. something but yeah. it's you know yeah i'm not really yeah pressed about it I otherwise heard that part. you know I heard that part when when you're single i feel like it allows you to just as you said with that laser focus that mm -hmm. tunnel vision once you get into a relationship i don't really i feel like you got to kind of balance the skills a little bit more you absolutely know? but um yeah it's so funny because i'm the type i'm like don't take me anywhere in public on Valentine's Day. I was yeah, because so it's going to be upset. crowded, yo. Yes. Yeah. The way, it's just so annoying. I'd rather like, you know, let's just be a dinner at home. Yeah. You know, yeah. just be romantic. Get some massages or something. Yeah. I'm, what I really, really like, I'm really here for, I don't know if it's me. I don't think it's overrated, but the rose petals. I love it. The rose petals. <laughs> on, not even, give me the rose petals leading to the bed. I don't yeah. want the rose petals just on the bed. Like, no, from the doorway. Shoot, if we got a house, I need it from the, the driveway. <laughs> Be extra with it. Be, Be extra. Very extra. Yes. And generous with the yes. rose petals. Give <laughs> so, are you doing anything for yourself, um, you know, this week in particular? No. No. I really, honestly, I don't care. I just don't care about yeah. it. I know? love that for you. I love it. I'll see y'all the week after. Like, right, whatever. I got stuff going on. Like, okay. <laughs> but how do you feel? Do you care about Valentine's um, Day? I, as I said, I honestly... Do this love thing, three six five. That's fine. I'm a very yeah. kind, generous person. So, what I do though, because I I am aware of like what's going on, mm -hmm. I'll try to. Sometimes I'll send my best friend a gift. I'll get my mom a gift. You know, and it's not nothing big. It's honestly small. Like I might send you some flowers and a card. I might send you some chocolates. 
you know, it's something that's just like, I'm thinking of you, ho. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> you know what? I forgot something. I do do Valentine's Day for my kid, of course. So I always yeah. buy him something. Yeah, so yeah, I guess yeah. that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, and while we're here, before I forget, I did bring you. It wasn't, I wasn't like, I'm like, I'm not giving her no chocolate, but I wanted to give you this book. Oh, it's, thank um, you. It's, it's a gear of positive thinking. Um, you know, it's it's really just inspiration, motivation, Thank and it's so actually much. literally certain things for each day for you to do. So I, I was like, it. you know what? I think you could bring this into Thank your life so and be a genius. But you're welcome. So that that's my Valentine's Day gift, but you know, um, <laughs> film a gift from me. So um, my next question is: so you you spoke on that that you're single, mm -hmm. right? Have you been dating at all? <laughs> Look. Dating in Atlanta is tragic. Um, wow. I've been dating on and off. I really don't want to date until um, where I want to be, you know, because I feel like everything else is a distraction. Unless I meet that one person that's on the same path as me and we right. motivate each other, I'm cool just right. being single. Right. But I have dated on and off out here. Okay, so you you said dating is trash like yeah I, I need you to give us some more why is dating what has it been like what's what's the worst experience you've had recently so one of the worst experiences so basically i met this guy um in uber i used to drive for uber he was my rider uh -huh. and we instantly clicked okay we instantly clicked the first conversation we were on the phone for hours uh -huh. and um on both of our dates that we went on, we were together for like eight, nine hours. You know, everything was okay. perfect. Long story short. I'm scared. <laughs> I I look him up. I Google him because I'm like, something's off. I wasn't hearing from him as much. I look him up. Uh -huh. I find out that he's married or has been married. But I'm not sure if he's still married. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask him the next time I see him. Right. I run into him at a club out here and I haven't... And basically, we ended up talking, and I find out that he has two wives. He's a polygamist. And when we met, he told me he was single. So that was heartbreaking because it's hard for me to meet somebody that's on my level and that I just connect with in every aspect, and then to find out that he's married, he's a polygamist, you know, I'm just... So that was one of the worst stories for me. So is he looking for a third? Did he we say We didn't even why? get that far. I'm oh, just like, like I'm yeah, it. it was over when I found that out. Yeah. So like, where you got, how, how long were you talking to him for? It wasn't long. It was like maybe a month. That was more so you finally meet somebody and you kind of yeah, clicked, clicked and clicked and, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Like we would, like on our dates, we would just talk for hours and like, we just really enjoyed each I other. Love that. And then That's he's in the that. entertainment industry and he's also in the tech industry and I'm also trying to get into the tech industry. So we were just on the same page about yeah. everything. Yeah. Like, Damn. So, yep. Womp, womp, womp. Listen, when you're dating, <laughs> I, and this is what I always tell people, I feel like when you're dating, it's very, very important to keep everything, like, just be honest. Like, tell yeah. me what you're looking for. Just tell me what's your situation. Up. Let's not waste each other's time. Like, and I'll let you know. It's like, you got a, you got a two eyes? Okay. Can I meet him? Yeah, right. <laughs> or, like, nah, I'm good, you know? If he would have been real with me from the beginning, I'm not saying I would have dated him still because I'm not into polygamy, but we could have been good friends, right, you know? Right, so. right. I felt that. So what, what essentially, I know you're not looking right now because the focus is full on your career, but when you do, <laughs> right, you know, this is open debate. What, what should a man provide? You know, what are you looking for? Like, give me four top qualities that, you know, have to be there. I need a man that is driven, that is, you know, has that entrepreneur mindset, yeah, you know, who wants yeah. more out of life. Um, I need somebody who is kind and humble. I love kind. Um, I love me a kind man. <laughs> yeah. Affectionate and a provider. <laughs> right. You know? Right, right, right. Okay, so now when we get when we say for provider, I've been seeing this conversation about fifty fifty come up. I ain't going fifty fifty with nobody. <laughs> Nobody. She didn't even let me finish nope. the question. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all right, so let me just play that devil's advocate too, because I'm I'm not down for the 50-50 thing, but um, women have been getting a lot of heat for it, and I've so. What do you think is going on with that? Why do you think 
you know, a man would come and say, listen, I want to go 50-50, you know? I mean, because of financial hardships or, you know, that's just what he, you know, that's just what he wants. He thinks it should be fair, you know? Do you think that, let's say you've been dating somebody for some time, let's say, I don't know, a few months, you guys really like each other, you guys really vibe, everything is what, what it should be essentially, um... And, you know, when you start out, you guys are not 50-50. But you, you never necessarily had this conversation with each other. It was just he was more so taking care of everything when you guys started dealing with each other. And then something happens. There's some sort of shift. And I'm going to have his back. Yeah. You're going to have his yeah, back. Yeah, I'm going to cover it until he get right, of course. Yeah, but you'll probably have that conversation with him and be like, listen, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to say because I love you, I support you. But well, I'm going to have to know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but you got to get it together. Yeah, okay. and I got your back in the meantime. Okay, yeah. so um, I want to say, so when you start dating somebody, when do you like, when, when do you initially start dating for them, dating someone? What are some things you're looking for? Like literally, you just met this person, you guys are starting to communicate via text, call, whatever. What are some things that you're looking for that man to be doing instantly? Um... As far as like what exactly like I mean, like overall, financially or no, the whole the whole 360. Oh, I want to be I want to be courted like properly. I want to be taken out on dates. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to talk all day throughout the day. Yeah. I'm more of an in person type of girl. Yeah. You know, but call me through. You know, give me a call during the day and um like I said, dates and affect. Very, I love affectionate men. Right. right um. Right, right. But yeah. Yeah. That's Give us some more because I have had this conversation. Every time I say court, uh -huh. there are a few people in the crowd that's like, what's that? Especially like, <laughs> I want to say younger men. Yeah. And I don't think that younger women are aware of it either because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I really understood what courtship was really all about until maybe 25, 26. So basically just somebody that's going to actively pursue me um, because I believe that the man is supposed to... Um, do that. I feel like the man is supposed to pursue the woman and um, when she says actively pursue, I want you guys to understand she's saying applying pressure. Yeah. yeah apply yeah. pressure. <laughs> so that means if I meet you and you're like acting all lackadaisical, like you want to call me once this week, yeah. call me once next Consistency. week. Consistency. Yeah, you got to be consistent. You got to be you got to take me out on dates right. and um, pause right there. I'm going to just keep pausing in between when she says take me out on dates, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about initiating dates. As and in planning the dates, you know? And I'm going to give you all a tip. It's so easy to plan a date. Like, the laziest thing in the world is, oh, what do you want to do? No, that's why you have conversation. That's why you try to right, get to know somebody. Right, Take right. mental notes of what they yeah, like. Yeah, And then go up and be like, oh, this morning, person might like this. Morning. Also yeah. conversation. What type right. of food do you like? Right. Then take me, you know, I like Mexican food. Take me to a Mexican right. restaurant. Right. It's simple. It's so easy. Right. What do you think about those people? How? What is a cheesecake date for you? Like, are you here for it? I used to love the Cheesecake Factory. Like, I have no problem with it. It's just my last. No, the last time I went, it was good. But uh -huh. two, two times before that, it was trash, and I was like, I'm never going back. But I don't have right. any problem with the Cheesecake Factory. Right, uh, right. Yeah. That's one of my spots. I'm not gonna yeah. lie to y'all. I'll be like, <laughs> baby, <laughs> <that's not easy." laughs> Yeah, I used to love the Cheesecake Factory, and, and they, they redeemed themselves the last. They time, became more so. popular, I think, after that whole thing. I think it was like some female online. She was like, the, like they dropped that a list. Bro. I was on that list. I wait. I go here. I, I go here. I go like here. sporting <laughs> events are fun. Right. I would love to go on a date like, to a game or something. Yeah, I'm. I, I really feel bad for you know you ladies because I see this right now as more as a thing that's taking place on the woman's side, where. It's like, oh, you got to take me to Ruth Chris. Yeah. You know, we got to go to only top tier fine dining restaurants. And my thing is, like, do you yourself even go really there? Fit? And it's, it's in all honesty, it's like whatever I require from a man, I do for myself already. Mm -hmm. It's already Absolutely. being done. So now I'm expecting you to come in and apply pressure and multiply. But I'm not asking you for anything that I'm not already doing. And I feel like a lot of women are doing that nowadays. I feel like there's a hype. It's, it's social media. And it's like I love that we're we're seeing and understanding we need to improve our expectations. Like increase what you expect. Yeah. But we also got to be realistic. Mm-hmm. 
you also have to be realistic Absolutely. and you got to understand the, the person you're dating if you're dating somebody that's only bringing in 30k a year you can't expect it to be fine dining but guess what i'm not gonna leave a man that's making 30k annually just because he's not touching 100k if if he is a man if he's yeah. opening my door mm -hmm. if he's calling me if he's protecting me i mean if he's providing peace security you know if he's just there for you overall the kind ship that you were talking about like men are not well i'm not gonna say men but it's hard to come by naturally kind like somebody that doesn't want anything from you mm -hmm. so i'm just being kind to you because i genuinely care about you and that's yep. it that's all it's hard to come by that so i feel like if you find that and they're not where they where you want them to be financially you guys can work on that together you can grow together you know, don't discard somebody that you can grow with just because they're you're not compatible. With. Yeah, yeah, like it's hard to come out. Listen, it's so hard it's to hard. find somebody that you're compatible with. Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna get some other questions. Um, do you think your relationship with your parents as a kid or your guardians as a kid either negatively or impacted you overall? Um. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. one? <laughs> she said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I mean, one? I feel like, of course, your relationship with your parents are going to impact who you are. Um, but I feel like it has impacted me negatively a little bit. Negative, For sure. Okay. What were some of those things that you felt like, you know, which could have been better or that you had to overcome? So, like, um, my relationship with my dad, you know, as mm -hmm. a kid or whatever, I felt some type of way about him until, like, a few years ago, and now uh -huh. we're tight. I love so, that. Yeah. So, you guys were <laughs> able to work on it. Overcome it, yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you, you had to actively... So, like, you said a couple years ago, so this is, like, more so recent that you guys are good? Yeah, so, like, every time when he would call and we would talk, I would just fake the funk, talk to him, whatever, whatever. Then I got to a point where I just had to really tell him how I felt. How you felt. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And it took some time, you know, because he wasn't ready for that conversation. Right. And, right. you know, he understands, and we're good. I love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Shout out to you guys doing the work and repairing relationships. And what's crazy about that is because... So, I'm a daddy's girl. My, my mom's my best friend, too. But, like, you know, naturally, I think little girls normally, like, are just daddy's girls, period. But, you know, like, me and my dad, we did have some issues that we had to overcome. And it was, like, more so, I want to say, towards my mid end, to the end of teens where I was, like, really, I don't know. I festered some energy where it was, like, I'm not feeling you. I don't want to talk to you, like, ever. And, you know, it, it was, like, at the same time, like, while holding this grudge, I was also hurting because that's my dad. So it's like, yeah, I might come off like I don't care and I'm I'm just like, it is whatever. That's the defense mechanism because you're yeah. hurt. Yeah. yeah, I was very hurt. So it was like, at a point, I did what you did and I was like, you know what? We're going to hash this out. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. And I held nothing back. I didn't think to myself, oh, this is my dad. No, I told him exactly how I felt. And I felt like that was the starting of our us being able to repair our relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and get back to to us to where to being good. So I feel like sometimes we really do have to have those hard, you difficult, uncomfortable conversations, you know, to move forward. So with that being said, do you feel like the negative relationship you have with your dad? Um, do you feel like that at all impacted like who you go for in men or like your dating at all? <laughs> Coincidentally, as stereotypical as it's going to sound, but I always go for men that I like my dad. The alpha wow. male, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The boss type of guy. Yeah. You know, when he walks into a room, commands everybody's attention. Right, and right, right. Generous, you know wow. what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. Wow, she goes for it exactly. That's so, Isn't that's so crazy? crazy. Yeah, because you either, you know, you see it. No, I think sometimes that is how it is. I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy though. So now you've developed that, I'm assuming. So do you think that once your relationship with your dad was worked on and got a little better, do you think relationship like with men and who you like sought out, did that grow as well? Wait, say that one more time. Did like your relationship with men, did that aspect start to grow and become better once you started to work on that relationship with your dad? 
Um, yeah, absolutely. Because like growing up, like I used to cut men off like so quick. Like I had no tolerance no for nothing. Then my mom was like, "Oh, you're so hard on guys. Give them chances." Da -da -da -da. I'm gonna be hard every time. So I started, you know, <laughs> being softer. But now I'm back on that. You cut off. Yeah, like, you get I'm cut not off. wasting my time. time. Yeah. So oh, we talked about we were talking about how we felt when we lost our virginities, and I think you know what? Not for nothing. For the average woman, they don't lose it the way they had it in mind. Ladies, let me tell you something. If you're looking for romance, a lot of these men don't know what that is. So, especially at a young age, I'm gonna give the guys that are super young some grace. They don't know nothing about it. So just know that it's not a realistic expectation. Nine out of ten. Yeah, so if you don't have your if you're like 16, 17, 18, which you shouldn't be doing that anyways. You know what though? My son's father did romance me though. He did? Like, yeah, I know that's why I said nine out of ten. He, he yeah. Like, yeah. No, nine out of ten because you do find those um rare. That's a very rare case, let's be honest. Yeah. That's a very rare case. Mm -hmm. Um, so okay. And be safe, y'all. While we're here on that topic, I do wanna say be safe. I feel like, unfortunately, in a lot of our communities, I'm Caribbean. In the Caribbean community, it is not something that it is allowed. So you can't. I can't go to my dad and be like, "Dad, I want to do this. I want to do boom boom with my boyfriend." Yeah. First of all, I wasn't allowed to, t to to teach um to introduce my dad to my boyfriend until I graduated from college. My dad was like, "Do not bring me no boyfriend, no nothing until you graduate from college." You know. It, no, I was doing my thing already, but I had to have that level of respect. So it's like the thing is, you're doing it from an ignorant standpoint. You don't know. You don't know nothing. So you gonna find out everything the hard way. So that's why I do want more forums like this, um, where we can talk, where we can put things on the table, we can share. And I could tell y'all if you expecting romance, not I ten, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, and stay protected, you know, go get tested. Men and women, protect yourself. Yeah, and if he say it's only you, don't believe him. Don't believe her either. If she say you're the only one, don't believe her, don't believe him. Also, go get tested before y'all even do But how about this now? Because I notice people talk about getting tested a lot, but people don't talk about what you do after getting tested. And unfortunately, we gotta, you got to be... Pretend you a dummy. So I need you to hold my hand, Google Gaga, through all of this. When you get tested, you have to get his results. Get the actual results. Yeah. Like the paperwork with the name, everything. Y'all have to exchange information. Or better yet, you guys can go get tested together. Go to the clinic together. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, so we're going to move on from that. Um, if you could change one thing, one issue in the world today, what would it be? The division between You would change what is it? The division between Oh, the division. I love that one. I love that one. I hate it. I hate it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hate it, but I, it also, I love it because it allows me to know where we are and the fixing that we have to do, you know? So now when I engage with a black man, a lot of times, I know majority of the stuff he's about to say to me. So I know what, you know, how to engage in conversation or how to reassure because you've been vocal online this whole time. So, you know, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, I think everyone knows that there's an issue. I just wish we would be more solution oriented. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't want to bash you. In all honesty, like, as I said, I'm a lover girl. So it's like, I'm not for the hate. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you're this, you're that. Black women, we need men. We need black men. Black men need black women. And that's period as a whole. Men need women. Women need men. We all need each other And at the end of the day. So it's like, let's learn what can I do to make you feel safe? What can I do to make you feel loved and appreciated versus attacking each other? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Then I love that stuff. That's what she would fix. Because I'm like, is she going to say hunger, poverty? I was thinking like something like that. <laughs> um, as a mother, right? 
as a mother that you you know you're not dating now but eventually when you start again or when you were at what point do you feel comfortable introducing someone to your son this one have to be a long time we're gonna a have long to time be locked in maybe a year yeah so it really just depends it's essentially. Not for no better than my son. He's right okay wow I love that. I love so. Okay, I love that. Okay. If your partner is interested in a threesome, are you game? No. <laughs> I don't say you're selfish, really. Ooh, I, I like that one. I don't share my food. I ain't sharing my nigga. I love that. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I respect it. Do you think it's okay to be a girlfriend doing wifely duties? And, and if you do think it's okay or not, at what point do you cross that line and say, okay, I'm not willing to do this, I'm not willing to do that? Like, what? It just depends. So, like, I naturally love cooking, you know, so I wouldn't mind cooking uh -huh. my dudes, of course. Um, I put my dudes, like, like, clean their rooms, like, like, for instance, if they were at work, I would, like, organize their stuff. Uh-huh, yeah. Like, yeah. I just naturally, you know, I was staying over there for a minute, like, I, I don't want to be in clutter, you know? So right, 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 right. You know, you know why I like that response a little bit, because essentially what she just said is I'm a wife, period. Yeah. So it's like sometimes it's hard to separate like between girlfriend and wife because I naturally give wife, you know. So it's like now I have to. I had to start toning stuff down and being like, okay, I'm doing too much. I need to relax. I'm I'm showing up for every little thing, and it's like, girl, that that's that's just the boyfriend. Yeah. Is your boyfriend moving like your husband? Is he doing husband? Have to. Yeah. Crazy. Is he doing husband level stuff? So, and I'm not just talking about taking you on dates. I'm talking about showing up when you need, like, see a need, fill a need. Like, and you don't have to ask for nothing. You, yeah. you know, he naturally is inclined. Yeah. yeah. And those things are important. But for me, I feel like, so number one, let me be clear. I feel, I feel as though it's very, 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 very important. And I'm talking to my ladies especially, but men, this is very important for you too, to date. Take the time to date. And then you have to figure out what dating looks like for you. What are you comfortable with doing? Yeah, you have to figure it out for yourself. And it's very different for everybody. For me, I noticed that, like, I would literally meet somebody. Everything's vibey. Everything's great. I end up in a three-year relationship. We can't take three years to figure out, okay, this is not going to be my husband. I can't take five years to say, okay, this is not going to be my husband. So at that point, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. And then, you know, my standards increased. I found myself and learned myself a little more. So I was not interested in the same stuff. I evolved, right? So now what I want in a man, in a partnership, evolved as well. So I was like, let me start. At a point, I started dating multiple people, right? Now, this is my rule. When it comes to multiple people, dating multiple people, we ain't kissing. We ain't. Yeah. We ain't boom, boom. We're nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It allows you to think clear. It allows me to learn where your headspace truly is. What are your true intentions? Are you really... You will see a man. Let me tell you. Go out with a man for 60 days, and he's actually really engaged in dates. He's calling you regularly. I'm talking consistently, taking you out consistently. You will see what his true intentions are. Some, if he get frustrated, cut him off. He's not there for the right reasons. Now, if he's just, like, going with the flow on, and you like, all right, this might be bad. You know, you get the feeling, and you start to know. Yeah, you start to know. You start to know. Yeah, but I do it. I advise everyone, date. Don't just lock yourself into one person. How do you know, for real, that this, this, is, my, this is my person? You don't know. Unless you know, no, but, you know, other than that, I feel like, and I think our community also don't have these, comp they, they look down on dating multiple people, you know, like, if you're a woman and you say, oh, I'm, date I'm dating right now, you know, you date, you dating one person, right? No, I'm, I got a date at five o'clock and then I got a date at nine. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> like, I'm in my twenties, I'm doing me, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in a marriage or anything, so I'm going to do me. Never all in one basket. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And so, 
I think, let me see, as a girlfriend, I'm a cook, I don't know, I do a lot as a girlfriend. I, I think that's why my price was so high. Like, my price is high at the end of the day because I know what I bring to the table. I bring the damn table. So then I want my man to bring the house so I can put the table in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, or we could get the house together. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because I know they're going to try to come at me like, what do you mean? Right. <laughs> What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you during sex? Like, what's his ding a ling small? Oh. <laughs> like, it's like a word, like a period. Yes, period. Um, it was just bad. It was just bad. I wasn't feeling him. He kind of turned me off right before. And then, like, I, I, maybe he smoked the black and mild, but his burnt. Like, right? Yeah. So I literally just walked out. Like, yeah. yeah. Then, y'all, make sure your breath is on, like, and, Mm -hmm. energy and everything y'all foreplay is a part of sex i just want y'all to know that like leading up to leading up to sex foreplay is very very important just letting y'all know um what about you she said his breath was too much <laughs> um i want to say the package was not what it, i thought it would be um so the the ding -a -ling was very small I keep saying ding -a -ling. But I'm not going to lie, the head game made up for it. So, yeah, but in terms of, like, bad breath, no, because I'm going to tell you, like, I'm going to give you some gum or, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we want to figure this out before. Like, so, yeah, but it, the package was small. It, it was a shocker how small it was. But as I said, like, it's once you're willing to please somebody, you know, so I guess they already knew that what they had, so they came. Like, boom, I'm going to touch down with, you know, some head, and it's going to be amazing. I'm like, hey. <laughs> um, What's your love language? All of them. I um, love that. Me too. Like, seriously. All, all of them. them. I but love I that. But I guess the main one would be quality time. Quality time? I'm okay. great. Okay. I love quality time. But, yeah, me, everything. I like surprises. I like gifts. I like dates. Physical like, size. give me give me everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, treat me like a baby. I'm really a big baby in real life. Me too. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm really a big baby. Like All right. <laughs> um, what's your favorite position? So I have two. So like for me, I love missionary. I just love the icon. Missionary. I love my big ass man being on. You know yes. What I'm saying? Yes. It's just so Fully could grab his back. Okay. Um, <laughs> And then my second one, <laughs> like, the guy to, like, make them crazy is yeah. reverse cowgirl. Reverse cowgirl. You know, a lot of people, I'm not sure if you've heard of it. You know, that's a very dangerous position. Oh, what you mean? No, I'm so serious. You could look it up. If you come down the wrong way, you could break a man's dick. And there has been multiple cases of that recently. Yeah, reverse. If you come down, you could literally break break their dick. You better slow mo. Don't be trying to. It's yeah, not no trampoline. Like, <laughs> Why y'all laughing? At? <laughs> it's true though. Y'all know reverse cowgirl. Yeah. It's, yeah. You could, your dick. Could, if if the woman comes down too hard, she could break your dick. Y'all didn't know that. Look it up. It's been a lot of cases. Yeah. Look it up. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, they all in my business. <laughs> all right, so, huh? And he broke it. Yeah, and they said that's like one of the most painful things that men could go like shit. Crazy. At like, that oh, point. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to break your dick. Like, just be delicate. Be careful. So, all right, so this is our last car. So, this is the one she saw earlier, y'all. <laughs> so, it's really just supposed to be fun. So, meatballs or hot dogs? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Okay, okay. All right, so with that, then I got to ask, pork or beef? Beef. All right, that's my girl. Okay. Um, Spit or swallow? Swallow. Swallow. And top or bottom? Bottom. No. bottom. Uh, I like both. I know. You like both, oh. right? It's like a time for everything. Yeah. I guess bottom. Bottom. Okay. 
Well, what it was. You? Um, I mean, let me see. Me balls or hot dogs? Probably, probably it's gonna have to be the hot dogs for me. It's, and and I'm not gonna lie, I prefer turkey hot dogs, but I just I'm not a B person. Yeah, like I'm not a meat meat person, so I really prefer turkey if I could get it. But um, spit or swallow. Um, I'm gonna say swallow and spit. Like, mm. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> and then I'm telling you, like. <laughs> Um, and then when we say top or bottom, I'm bottom only because I'm a lover girl. Like, and I really yeah. like missionary is one of my favorite positions. So it's the same thing for me. Like, I really like the level of intimacy that's in the position. I just like being one. I feel like we're more one. I could hold you. I could cradle you. You could hold me. I could and cradle me. So that's definitely. But then you know I learned how to ride. Like it's a way to ride it from down there too. So yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get it. You know what I'm <laughs> but yeah, so it was so so much fun. Give me a hug. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yes, yeah, we want to thank you for tuning in with us. So, you know, and hopefully we'll do many, many more. And definitely blessings to your journey. I don't say good luck. So, blessings on what you got going on. Yeah. Bye, y'all.